Suppose you had a robot to wash the dishes for you. You could stand at its side and tell it what to do, like this. Wash plate number one, put it to dry. Wash plate number two, put it to dry. Wash plate number three, put it to dry. Well, you get the idea. The trouble is, by the time you reach plate 100, the last one, you're absolutely worn out. Of course, there's a much better way. All those instructions were the same, only the plate number changed. So what we need to do is tell the robot to do the same thing a hundred times. And we can do that in one go, like this. For n equals 1 to 100, wash plate n, put to dry, next n. That means you can give the robot its orders and nip off somewhere to relax. The instruction loops back on itself until the job's done. The robot says to itself, n equals 1, wash plate 1, put it to dry. Next, n. n equals 2. Wash plate 2. Put that to dry. Next, n. n equals 3. Wash plate 3. Put that to dry. And so on and so on. Much easier all round. When you want a robot or a computer to do the same thing time and time again, you can save a lot of time and energy by making a loop. Then it can use one set of instructions for hundreds or thousands of actions. Most games have loops in them somewhere, usually lots of loops. Let's see how we can use a loop to make our star move across the screen, from left to right. What we need to do is first print the star on the left, and then print it again in the next column to the right, then print it again in the third column, and so on, and so on, and so on. And then it should look as though it's moving across the screen. It kicks off at column zero and moves one square at a time to column 39. Of course, on the spectrum, that number will be 31. It's up to you and your micro. So let's try this easy loop. For C equals 0 to 39, print tab CR asterisk next C. Or for C equals 0 to 31, print at RC asterisk next C. What we're telling the micro is this. Start at column zero, print the star. Go to column one, print the star. Go to column two, and so on, over to the right-hand edge of the screen. Well, it sounds just like that washing up, doesn't it? Well, I've tapped that program into the micro here, and I've also remembered to give it a value for R, the row number. Look what happens. <laughs> well. That's not quite what we had in mind. It's going across OK, but it's left an image of itself behind. What we really want to do is rub out the old star before we print the new one. And one way of doing that is to add one extra line, line 200. In that new line, line 200, we're printing a space where the star was printed before going on to the next column. Now, that's like using an electronic rubber. Let's see what it does. <laughs> well, did you see it? Greased lightning, nothing. Well, micros are supposed to be fast, but here's a case where it's a bit too fast. Let's slow it down a bit. But uh, how do you slow a micro down? Well, a rather neat way is to do what kids do when they play hide-and-seek. Count up to 10 or 20 or whatever. Remembering, of course, that our micro counts a good deal faster than the average kid. And that needs another short loop, something like this. For t equals 0 to 25, next t. And that's the same on both micros. I've chosen the letter t for that loop to remind myself that it's a timing loop. We don't actually ask the computer to do anything with that t value, only keep counting up to 25. Let's put that instruction into our program. But where? Well, you could try various places and see what happens, anywhere inside that first loop. But the best place I've found is just before the star's rubbed out. That way, it'll keep the star on screen for most of the time. So here it goes in at line 180. Oh, by the way, some micros, like the ZX81, will want that next T instruction on a line of its own. Well, let's run the program and see if it does what we want. Shazam! Just what we wanted. And of course, we can speed it up or slow it down just by altering the numbers in that timing loop. Well, we've got our star or our spaceship to move across the screen. Let's add one very simple instruction at the end to make it do the same thing over and over again. 
We just add this. 220 go to 160. And then as soon as it's completed the journey across the screen, it starts up again with the star at column zero. And this is what happens. So it actually works. Let's recap on how we got it working. Here are those instructions again. The whole thing is a repeated loop. Line 160 gives values for C, the column number. It starts up at zero, which means the left of the screen, and it goes up one step at a time to 39 on the electron or 31 on the spectrum. That's the right of the screen. Line 170 tells the computer to print a star in column C, wherever that happens to be, at row R. We've told the computer that R is 5. Next, we have a brief pause while the computer counts from 0 up to 25. That's what line 180 is all about. And after that, the computer comes to line 200, which tells it to rub out the star. In other words, print a space where the star is. Line 210 tells the micro to go back and do that little routine, print, pause, rub out, do it again with the next value for C. In other words, a little way over to the right. Eventually, of course, we reach the right-hand side of the screen. C is 39 or 31, and the computer has finished with that loop. So it moves on to line 220, only to be told, do it all again, go back to line 160. Well, who'd be a computer? So that's how we get the star to move from left to right. But if you want it going back and forth, well, it's very simple to do that too. If you send for the listings for this program and all the others in the series, we'll show you how. Details of where to get your listings at the end of the program. Well, now, this routine is quite a useful building block, and it could form the basis of several different games. We'll look at a few next week. But now let's give the routine a name and put a label in the listing. That way, when we come back to change the program or jazz it up a bit, we'll know precisely what this chunk of program is all about. Here's a label for it right at the beginning of the loop, line 150. 150 rem, main movement loop. That word rem means remark or reminder or even remember. It's there for us, not for the computer. In fact, whenever the computer meets the word rem, it just skips straight on to the next instruction. But when we look at the listing, we can spot straight away what's going on. Personally, I always decorate a rem statement with full stops or asterisks or hash signs or whatever, so it doesn't just blend into the rest of the program. OK, then, we've made a good start on getting our monster zap game working. Next week, we'll see how to turn this into this. In the meantime, send off for those listings. By Programme 3, you'll need them. Oh, and while you're waiting for them to arrive, see if you can work out a movement routine on your computer. Don't just sit there, get things moving. You could end up with something like this. Bye. Next Monday at 5.30, Fred Harris demonstrates conditional instructions and structural programming so that you can get a step or two closer to zapping that monster. And to get hold of a copy of the free listings for the Spectrum, BBC and Electron Micros, plus details of how to get translations for other micros, send that large 24-piece stamped and self-addressed envelope to me and my micro, Admail 1, Leeds, LS3, 1YS. 
And that's also the address from which you can get video copies of the series.